All right, good afternoon. No, it's still the morning. What am I talking about? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Uh, Force here again, casting game number two between Mana and Mondragon. So this is a series of games. It's actually a four-game series, so game number two of four. This time we are on Jungle Basin. How's everyone doing today? I'm feeling a little bit more awake. I guess I wasn't really, I wasn't tired. I was just kind of feeling really mellow last cast. I was taking it easy, kind of relaxing. So I'll, I'll, I'll be a little more animated this cast. I'm feeling it right now. Um, I've moved on from my chai tea latte to a water. And um, water tends to wake me up, actually. Especially really cold water splashed in my face. So maybe I'll just dump this water bottle over my face and we'll continue with this cast. I don't think that's actually going to happen, but we are seeing right now Mana drop the pylon at the front of his base, going to be moving out, clearly wants to wall off. His opponent is Zerg, and that's uh, pretty much necessary as Protoss or Terran against any Zerg player. If you don't know that by now, well, you must be new to StarCraft, and that's okay, because if you are new to StarCraft, you can mosey on over to my channel and check out some tutorials. Very helpful. Look at that. I, I plugged myself in my own video. How impressive is that? Now, we are seeing Mana move forward right now with his scout. Wants to get a very early scout to see precisely what Mondragon is doing. He of, is, of course, going to be checking for a very quick expansion. Um, right here on Jungle Basin, expanding is actually pretty damn easy. Uh, the one big concern is watching these back rocks. You do want to make sure that if you do expand early, that you keep an eye back here and, and you don't get any kind of surprise attack in the rear because nobody likes a surprise attack in the rear in any situation, really. Uh, man, I'm putting down that gateway right now, going to be followed up with the Cybernex Core, of course. Or. Maybe a forge, you know? Who knows? Maybe he's going to go gateway forge and go for a quick expansion. I don't think so because we are seeing this assimilator, but that was a possibility up until that assimilator dropped. That was obviously something that could have happened. It wouldn't, not necessarily likely to happen, but it could have happened. Now we are seeing that spawning pool. Again, opening up with that pool. Probably going to be getting an extractor, going for that fast metabolic boost, and then expanding. That's actually what we saw. Good job surrounding that probe there, but they're managing to sneak the probe out. Now, if you don't know what you can do, I, I moved the camera for a moment, but if you ever get your gatherer while scouting, Scouting early in the game, if your gatherer um, ever gets caught in a surround from opponent's units, what basically what happened here, I'm going to try to explain this to you folks, um, the probe was surrounded by drones. Typically, you couldn't move the probe. Well, if you don't know, if you click on a mineral patch, it forces your worker through the surround. So even if you're surrounded and you typically, if you're clicking on the ground all over the place and you couldn't move it, if you click on a mineral patch, it will force your unit through the surround as if he was trying to gather. And then you can just move him along in his merry way. So if you don't know that, now you do. Nice little nice little tip of the day there for you. Um, Cyber Next Core going down. Four mana right now. And actually, we're going to take a little pause here. I'm not actually going to pause the game, but now that I mentioned tip of the day, that kind of reminded me of a couple of things. Uh, one of which is, you know, I was doing that StarCraft daily report and that did stop. And I understand some people were kind of upset by that, frustrated. Why would you start a daily report and then stop it? I had returned to work basically um, a few days after I started the daily report and it made it a little more difficult. Daily report takes a long ass time to produce. Um, it's just if gathering material and, and putting together all the, the footage and stuff. It takes a while to produce. So look at that. Very nice. They're taking a few shots at that uh, probe and then surrounding it for that extra damage and killing it off. So what I want to say is that it's going to be coming back. The idea is still there, obviously, and I would like to continue producing it. So I want to let you know it's, it's going to come back eventually. Um, I also want to touch on strategy videos. I did say in a prior video, I believe it was a video I released yesterday, that I would be coming out more strategy videos within the next two days. So today would be day one of the two days. And that will be happening. So if you don't see them later tonight, you will be seeing three new strategy videos tomorrow. So if that's something that you prefer, then just keep an eye out for that because it will be coming. Now, expansion is up right now. We can see, of course, Mondragon did go for that expansion as expected. Um, just wanted to get that early spawning pool for that early defense. I actually decided not to get that metabolic boost and not getting it until just about now. So he was a little bit over there um, on the Vespian. He let it sit a little bit longer than necessary. You might be losing this uh, Overlord here to the Stalker Fire if he doesn't move it out of the range there. I think he might be okay. Yes, he is. He does manage to get it just out of the range. So Stalker not able to kill it. I I think he might be moseying all around though to the opposite side to try to take it off but the overlord is going to feel pretty safe if he moves down right in this direction now let's take a look at the bases here to see what's going on we are seeing a twilight council come out so what can we expect well there's lots of opportunities he could be going for something like blink stalkers he could also be going for a dt rush that is a possibility we're going to see right about now twilight council is up and here we go blink stalker so it is blink stalkers that is mana's decision now we are seeing a few zerglings moving out going to try to deny that probe scout is he going to be moving a queen forward to stop it from getting into the base he wants to deny that probe scout as much as possible uh does end up taking it out before it gets up the ramp there so good job there by mon dragon or mono dragon depending on how you prefer nope it's not mono dragon it is mon dragon so yeah <laughs> um blink being chrono boosted in right now so gonna be going very 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 stalker heavy and gonna be utilizing that blink um one thing to realize too 
is that once he gets vision right here, he can actually blink right into the back. If you have units right here, you have vision, and it is the same level, so you will be able to blink stalkers right in. They, they also, it's very exploitable as well if you do like a pylon. If you place a pylon right here, you have vision over here, and you can warp into the back. Uh, very obnoxious if you're not a Protoss player. If you are a Protoss player, it's pretty phenomenal. So, <laughs> going to be working out these rocks right here. Now, we can see at this point that Mana does not have vision back there. He obviously hasn't gone for an expansion because he is going for this heavy push, this three-gate blink stalker push really early on in the game. We can see right now the stalker is moving out. Um, does he have a proxy pylon? No, he doesn't. Nowhere as of yet. Uh, might be going for an expansion soon. Actually, might be dropping it right about now. We're going to see that go down. That would be pretty interesting. Um, you no? Know? No, he didn't. So, ended up using those resources to warp in some more Blink Stalkers. Kind of interested as to why it's even over there. And he's going to be he's gonna aware of that right now. No, so still can't see the rocks. This is obviously a problem. He wants vision of those rocks. Now, Blink Stalkers right in the back of the base there. Did miss those for just a moment. Uh, they did manage to move in the back of the base there. And going to be taking out this expansion very quickly now. He wants to get his forces together. He doesn't have a lot of Zerglings at this point. Coming out with a few more. He does have these Spine Calls. He's going to be placing them down. Moving down with the Queens as well. Might be in danger of losing this expansion. They're going to get target fire. Yes, he will. He's going to lose this expansion. Too many stalkers right here for him to deal with. And the expansion does go down. We do have some Zerglings moving forward. Spine crawl is in place but not enough. Lots and lots of blink stalkers right now. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to deal. And trying to move the queen away but ends up losing it. Does he have more Zerglings coming out? No, he doesn't. Yeah, okay, finally coming out with some more Zerglings. Eight Zerglings on the way. I'm not going to decide. Deciding not to go with any roaches because of the fact that blink stalkers on the board. He's going to do. He's going to be able to easily blink away from any roach fire and it won't be much of a problem. He's just basically going to do stalker peeling. And Mono Dragon realizing that just manages to call a good game and that's it it's a very short game this time around now let's do a little uh just a little post game analysis here what was the big issue for mondragon well there are two really important things to realize about this and i'm actually gonna while looking at this i'm just gonna swing the swing the camera back a little bit swing the replay back a little bit so we want to look at two important things as to why there was an issue first and foremost look at this big old red number up here <laughs> big old red number what this means of course is that mondragon is supply capped you can see here coming out with three overlords at this point in the game after losing the hatchery so blink stalkers move for advantage to catch some overlords out of position taking them out and as such supply capping mondragon obviously that's an issue that's a big problem you can see why that's a big problem as well um him being supply capped meant that he couldn't reinforce this whole time you can see he's got five larvae right here um and then over here he's also got some additional larvae if i can select them all and not be a dummy there we go so look at all this larvae right here one two three four five six seven eight nine nine larvae look at that i can count from one to ten well we don't know if i can get to ten but i can get to nine so that's good but the point is these nine larvae look at all these resources this could be 18 more zerglings it could be nine roaches it could be a whole bunch of things but it's not any of those things because he was supply capped so a danger as zerg is having your overlords in positions that early game ground anti-air units like the stalker or the marine can snipe out and with a well-timed push catch you with your pants down <laughs> and cause you to lose the game i mean this is exactly what happened here to mondrag and that's one big issue the second big issue if we take a look at that unit counting station look at the discrepancy between workers now, the expansion from Mondragon means he wants to saturate it, means he needs to make drones, means that he needs to use larva on those drones. He droned pretty hard, um, and as a result of that hard droning, he didn't have enough early game units to help defend. So how do we how do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? Well, the idea here is that if Mondragon was aware, we can see that he's not aware. Now we do have some slight vision over here. You can see at some point he checked this expansion, but this was from an early game scout. This was from his initial drone being sent on the base. So he's at about eight minutes in the game, right? <clears throat> and there's no expansion from his opponent. That has to give you some concern. If you're playing in your games and your opponent hasn't expanded around the eight minute mark, they're still on one base. You have got to expect a push early in the game it's 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 pretty much guaranteed right if they're still on one base between eight, the eight and ten minute mark they haven't expanded an early push is very likely so you need to expect it and you need to prepare for it and that needs to come down to scouting as well you need to have units scouted about you need to have units in positions that are going to see a push coming so that you can prepare for it in time um had he seen this push coming early enough and he responded properly he may have had enough units he may have been able to get those overlords out a little earlier because that supply cap obviously kind of put him in quite a tough situation so yeah i mean that's just a little post game analysis i thought i'd do that for you because it's, it was pretty there were some two really big things that kind of caused mondragon to use the game again lose the game is the fact that he got supply capped so be careful with the overlords early game and the second thing was that he wasn't sure whether or not there was an expansion and not being aware of that is an issue because he didn't prepare for the possibility of one base push so yeah that's about that so this was again the second game in the three game series between these two and four game series between these two players so right after this moving on to game number three hopefully you guys uh, take a look at that and 
And yeah, as always, uh, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep watching and keep owning. So moving down, going to be getting some more probe kills there. And this is actually really, really huge for Mondragon. The fact that he was able to sneak into Mana's base, um, kind of a big blunder by Mana. He obviously left that spot for his ult to block, but a little bit too late. You know, excellent push out there with Mondragon. Managed to sneak in just in time before that first zealot was out. Obviously, his first zealot was severely delayed because of going for this fast forge and that cannon. So that first zealot severely delayed, and as a result, lots of economic damage there uh, for Mana. Mana took a huge, huge hit there. So that is actually really good that could be exactly what Mondragon needs to kind of stay on par of his opponent again like I said if you're on the same number of bases as your opponent as Zerg you're kind of in trouble you do want to be one base ahead of your uh, Protoss or Terran opponent so as a result you know doing that economic damage kind of evens the evens the bar there and kind of delays the necessary um, action of Mondragon <laughs>